हेलो डियर व्यूअर्स दिस इज डॉक्टर आयशा नाजुक हियर वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू एक्सप्लोर द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पॉइसॉन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन विच इज़ अ डिस्क्रीट प्रॉबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन यू कैन यूज चैप्टर सिक्स ऑफ डगलस लेंड बुक विच यू कैन इजिली डाउनलोड इट फ्राम द जेनिस लाइब्रेरी एनी हाउ फॉर द जनरल व्यूअर्स इफ यू वॉन्ट टू इक्वेंट योर सेल्फ विद बेसिक आइडिया ऑफ पॉइसॉन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन दिस वीडियो अलोन विल सर्व द पर्पज okay so it's a discrete probability distribution so we will be counting number of something right uh let's say there is a contractor who is you know claiming that whenever he construct uh, a wall let's say the number of defective tile is let's say on average equal to 3 right that's what the contractor is claiming first assumption of poisson distribution is that you know the number of defective tiles is not linked from trial to trial now what does that mean for example if i give a contract of let's say constructing two walls to this contractor then according to the assumption of poisson distribution the number of defective tiles in wall number 1 and wall number 2 they are not linked right so of course not all the assumptions are in practical life you know 100% true but here we are assuming that if i am giving a contract of two walls to this contractor then the number of defective tiles in wall number 1 and wall number 2 they are not related right so this is the first assumption of poisson distribution that the occurrence of you know whatever thing or the process that you want to count for example here the process is the number of defective tiles so whatever process you are analyzing its pro its number or the proportion remains uh, constant there is no link between the proportion of defective tiles in the two set of walls uh then the second assumption is probability that two or more events occur together in an interval is almost zero for example here what is an interval one wall so either we'll have two defects in one wall or three defects i mean these two events can't occur together so this is the second assumption of poisson distribution that the probability that two or more events occur together in an interval is negligible I mean, in real life, if it's not zero, because here I'm only discussing about wall. But, but once you explore different example of Poisson distribution, you will understand that it's not always true that uh, this probability is zero that the two ever events occur together. But theoretically speaking, the probability is zero that two or more event occur in a single interval. So here, what does that mean? that in a given wall either we can have two defect or three defects then event occur randomly in time or space now what does that mean that defective tiles can occur anywhere on the wall i mean this is just one description that all defective tiles are here they are adjacent but that's just by chance the three defective tiles can occur anywhere on the wall i mean if the contractor is claiming that uh, the number of defective tiles will be 3 on the wall that uh, he's i mean on average they are 3 so they the three defect they can occur anywhere on the wall so event occurs randomly in time or space okay so events can occur randomly in time or space so this was the you know third assumption because first assumption was no link of occurrence of an event uh from one interval to the second interval probability that two or more events occur together in an interval is zero and the third one was event occurred randomly in time or space now the fourth assumption is occurrence of an event is directly proportional to the size of the interval now what does that mean for example if the contractor was quoting that on average uh, uh he, he i mean on average the number of defective tiles is 3 of course he is going to give you a quotation for how many square feet he is is he making this claim for example he say that whenever i construct a 300 square feet wall on average historically the number of defective tiles is equal to 3 
So if we were to predict the likelihood of let's say 5 defective tiles on a 600 square feet wall. You see the contractor is quote, giving the quotation for 3000 square feet. But if we have to predict something for 6000 square feet then we must adjust our average. And how do we adjust? That's very simple. For example, uh, you see that he's giving a quotation for let's say if we give a quotation for 1000 square feet and he says that th there are three defective tiles in every 1000 square feet and we have to you know adjust it for let's say 2500 square feet how we can do so if in, on 1000 square feet the defective tiles is three so on one square feet using the simple unitary method if we divide thousand by thousand so we will also divide defective tiles uh, by thousand so for one square feet the defective tiles on average is equal to three by one thousand and for the required um, you know wall if the required wa wall size is 2500 then one multiply by 2500 that's equal to you know you multiply 2500 here so you have to multiply 2500 here in the defective tiles as well so the average is adjusted to 7.5 so roughly uh, we are predicting that on a wall of size 2500 square feet the average number of defects will be somewhere close to 8 because we round it up let's say 7.5 to 8. So this is the fourth assumption that whenever uh, the interval size changes we have to adjust. So we are assuming that the occurrence of an event is directly proportional to the size of the interval as in this example the size of the wall. So these are the now I'm you know enlisting all the assumptions here as a list. So these without you know without linking to the wall uh, example now I'm in general mentioning uh, that the events occur they are independent probability of two or more events occurring is zero. Events occur randomly in time or space and events occur uniformly that is the mean number of events in an interval is directly proportional to the length of the interval. So I intentionally started with the example of the wall so that you are not you know lost in the theoretical uh, details while exploring through these um, you know bullet points or the four assumptions. So now you can easily link these assumptions you can you know watch the video again and you can you know develop this understanding again how am I linking these assumptions with the example of constructing let's say wall and noticing the average number of defects. So the general and up till now I have set the you know foundation or the background for Poisson distribution. So what is the formula for Poisson distribution? Probability of x is equal to mu power x. So what is mu? whatever the average that you are using for example here we were noticing the average and in some instances we were also adjusting that average so whatever you the average you are using that is mu x is the value for which you want to compute the probability e is the exponential function and raised to the power minus mu divided by x factorial so if you don't know about exponential function and factorials you should first develop the understanding of factorials and exponential function only then you will be able to uh, comprehend well the idea of Poisson distribution. By the way the exponential function is available in the scientific calculators or you can uh, simply use 2.71828 as an approximation of exponential function. So let's do one numerical example I will come back to these two later. Suppose that it has been observed that on average 180 cars per hour pass a specified point on a particular road in the morning rush hour. Due to the impending road works, it is estimated that congestion will occur closer to the city center if more than 5 cars pass the point in any one minute. Now you see according to the given data, the average is given according to uh, uh, you know 60 minutes or 1 hour. So we need to adjust it according to 1 minute. So how do we adjust? Coming back here. So we are have 180 cars for each 60 minute. So for 1 minute we have expected number of cars is 3. So and why am I converting to 1 minute? Because in the question it is saying that we have to compute the probability according to 1 minute. 
right so i have adjusted the value of mu equal to 3 and how have i adjusted 180 divided by 60 because 180 was given for 1 hour or 60 minutes so mu is equal to 3 and now i have to calculate the probability of congestion and when will the congestion occur when more than 5 car pass the point right so we have to compute the probability of x is greater than or equal to 5 which is equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less than 5 why am i doing this i am simply applying the law of complementary event we know that in a given minute theoretically speaking i don't have any idea how many cars can pass so i can say if none will pass that is zero car passes that point one two three so on so i don't know what's the upper limit i don't have any idea let's say so the you know uh, distribution or the range of poisson variable is from zero till infinity because theoretically we don't have any upper limit anyhow so we have to compute the probability that x is greater than or equal to 5 but there is no upper limit so uh, and it's going even if there is one let's say uh, by the way there is no upper limit so if i start from 5 and i keep on adding different probabilities that's going to take a lot of time so what i can do is i can compute the probability of opposite event and subtract it from one so i'm using uh, the law of complementary events so greater than or equal to 5 means 1 minus less than 5 so in less than 5 we have different option 0 1 2 3 and 4 so i'm going to compute the probability for 0 for 1 for 2 and so on and i'm going to subtract all these from 1 or the sum of all these probabilities from 1 so how i'm going to calculate probability that x is equal to 0 it is equal to e raised to the power minus mu and what is mu the average and we are talking about average according to one minute interval because i am computing the probability according to one minute so mu is equal to three according to one minute so you can see e raised to the power minus mu which is three mu power x what is x for the value for which i am computing so i am computing the probability for zero so mu power zero divided by zero factorial by the way the general formula is e power minus mu mu power x divided by x factorial similarly probability that x is equal to 1 is equal to e power minus 3 3 power 1 over 1 factorial and by the way if you have to compute e power minus 3 you can easily either use the scientific calculator or let me give you an idea you can uh, you know use your calculator or go to excel and let's say i have to compute e power minus 3 just hold on a minute until excel you know loads so we have to wait for a couple of seconds before excel loads yeah okay so suppose i have to compute e of let's say minus 3 that's how i'm typing here so i have to compute e of minus 3 i can simply say that this is an approximation will be 2.71 raised to the power minus 3 so why 2.71 that's an approximation for exponential function so in excel we know that if we have to compute power so power of 2.71 to the power minus 3 so this is roughly equal to 0 0.05 so this is how without using even the exponential function you can use this 2.71 and whichever for example if you want to calculate e power minus 4 then you will say 2.71 raised to the power minus 4 right so this is how you can easily calculate the exponential function as well anyhow so this is how we can you can calculate the probability for x equal to 0 x equal to 1 similarly I'm, i can calculate probability of x equal to 2 3 and 4 so they are since they are similar so i haven't typed 
uh, the equations for the other values anyhow so this is the table 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 so what I'm going to do is you see the notation was that if more than 5 car passes uh, by the way I've typed here so this should be 0 to 5 the event here is uh, 0 till 5 so uh, here I have shown all possible options up till 5 so don't get confused that I've used a diagram for you know encircled up till 4 whereas the question says that the congestion occurs if more than 5 so I should have practically highlighted all these 0 up till 5 so more than 5 means up 6 7 so on so need to adjust this figure as well so I have to you know subtract probability of 5 as well from this so that's why uh, we have calculated probabilities up till 5 and then we subtract the sum of all these probabilities from 1 so this will be probability that more than 5 car passes so pardon for uh, this uh, you know error here in this particular box I should have also enlisted pro minus probability of 5 and I should have also highlighted this 5 here in this diagram as you can see that in the question congestion means more than 5 right so more than 5 means 6 7 8 so on so opposite of that is 1 minus less than or equal to 5 so I should have encircled 5 as well and I should have typed here minus the probability of 5 as well so that's why you know all these probabilities we add these and subtract from 1 so this was uh, you know about the concept of Poisson distribution and uh, you know its assumption and a numerical example so this was about uh, all about Poisson distribution I hope you understand the basic concept as I said, I am Dr. Aisha Nazo. I like to connect with my viewers and that's why the purpose of sometimes showing my own picture or some shot that I capture while traveling. By the way, I am a travel lover as well. So, I sometimes I dif take different shots of nature, let's say during hiking or something. So, the sole purpose of sharing these pictures is to connect with my audience. So, I hope that you like the video and it helps you during your learning journey. Feel free to drop me an email if you want to connect with me and if you have any, for example, if you want these slides, you can simply drop me an email and you will get the, you know, uh, these lecture videos. Thank you for watching once again. Do subscribe to the channel and share with other viewers.